Hello, I'm Harsha, Vice President for Strategy and Service Transformation at Cold. I'm here today to present our strategy on customer experience, how Cold can be world-class world in providing the best experience for our customers. We're talking about the customer, the lessons we have learned and the lessons we are learning to achieve that goal. Thanks a lot. I would like to start by telling, you know, this year is our 25th anniversary. We celebrated our birthday yesterday and somebody uh, celebrated too hard. Uh, 1992 and uh, this year is our 25th anniversary uh, at Colt and we are very happy uh, you know we have reached this far. I won't talk to the slides I'll talk around it because uh, you know you can read what's on the slides uh, and I'll also try to link with what our colleagues uh, have you know uh, discussed in the morning actually so it's uh, it aligns to what everybody is thinking about uh, customer experience. The one thing that I will not do is I won't, would like to not use the word customer. Uh, for me, it is an experience. Uh, I don't even like to call it human experience because in the context of what we do, especially in the context of, let's say, just networks, the connectivity that we provide generally in any telcos, who is the customer? You know, we connect a lot of hospitals. And uh, at the operating table, uh, the instruments and the ideas of information that is coming as part of an X-ray or everything else is connected through the network and that's going to a human interaction. So uh, if I am on an operating table, if customer, if doctor is looking at me as a customer, I think it's a different connotation to what we're talking about. For me, it is an experience in the context of Similarly, you know, our networks reach, you know, far and wide beyond. I'm talking from the telco point of view. And when we connect a, a farming community um, and the entire network depends on and the solution that they have on the other side is when does the sprinkler, uh, sprinkler come on and what time does the shade for specific plants need to serve? Who is the customer? Is that a plant or is it, you know? So the, it's the experience that makes us a humongous difference in the context of you know, what we are trying to do, uh, especially in, the, in telco. I think we have missed that, uh, in especially big telcos, we have completely missed it. The theme for us at Colt is be more demanding. Uh, we want our partners to be extremely demanding and we want to handle it and we can handle it. Our journey that we are going towards is to handle, uh, you know, the requirements and the aspirations and the experience that they want to ask us. I want them to be more demanding and we want to achieve uh, their demands and uh, to you know exceed their demands. I'll quickly tell who we are. Like I said, we are 25 years old to date. We are a part of a fidelity uh, company and I'll just highlight a couple of points here. Some of them are amazing to me. I'm new to Colt. I'm, I'm here uh, at Colt for the last eight months. Before that, I was with BT, and before that, I was with Verizon and GT, GT and Bellcore, Bell Labs. I'm a telco through and through. I just doesn't know anything else other than telco. Uh, so everything in my world it happens under the ground or in the ether. So it's extremely difficult to explain things. What do you do? Uh, because everything happens in abstract for most of the uh, people that we talk about. I would like to talk a couple of things. Um, number one, this one is amazes me actually. No telco in the world, actually big or small, has connected 24,000 vertical buildings, what we call you know head offices in over 200 uh, locations, 200 cities actually. And the third point I want to make is the number of data centers uh, that we have connected uh, with the high bandwidth, you know, with all the things in the context of today's world moving towards virtualization, the number of uh, data centers that we have as part of the assets that Colt has uh, is simply, you know, it's absolutely beautiful. I call it the red carpet. The three things, that the reason I mentioned that is just like any company, you know, Colt, we had our highs and we had our lows. Uh, generally, in the context of telco, we try to move to, you know, lateral uh, markets. Some uh, Trump tried to move to vertical markets. In the context of cold, our core competency is nothing but network. Network, network, network. And we tried to move to the adjacent uh, you know, landscapes, markets of IT, data center. Uh, for some it works, for some it doesn't work, and it does not work for us. Uh, for some telcos, do a vertical shift, you know, go from network to 
media to mobile to so there's a vertical shift to the in the market and also there's a you know a try to acquire the lateral spaces now we are focusing back again on our core competencies and core strength to make our uh, network I like the idea of intelligence and that's the theme of it for the in this solution anyway the seminar anyway and that's what and I'll take you through what our experience is about why we are doing that yeah so that's uh, cold at a high level, and those are the three things that I am, you know, flabbergasted actually every time I look at it. This is our survival strategy. This is our strategy in the context of the assets that we have laid down is for our survival, uh, equating that to the reproduction, uh, meaning the growth of our uh, organization. Directly coming down to the service organization itself, we are 4,000 people. We, are, we consider like a small boutique. Uh, we want to be very agile and nimble, but reality is somewhere a little different. Uh, our organization, out of that 4,000, half the people in cold currently directly interacts with our customers. We have over 25,000 uh, customers, and the more than 50 to 60 percent of our uh, employees. It has a direct relationship, one-to-one -one relationship with our customers. And it actually reflects in the context of how we are measured uh, comparative to other telcos, why we are doing good, why we are where we are not doing good, uh, so forth. So this is our support organization that it sits in front of, so to speak, right in front of the face of the customers, supporting their day-to-day -day activities, supporting their uh, services, the entire supply chain, be it not the end customers that we are trying to deploy, what it is, the, you know, who actually is using that, actually. So I just wanted to you know, give these two perspectives at a higher level what Colt is about and what the service organization looks like. This actually, you know, we are, from the telco point of view, I'll start from telco, we have failed when it comes to experience. I mean, no big telco, the reason nobody understood what an experience is, you know, no big organization in the telco context have come up with a solution that is human interaction, uh, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Facebook. I mean, any one of our big uh, telcos could have come up with that. It's a communication channel at the application layer, and we all completely missed it. Not one telecommunication in the world has come up with an app or a social interaction, human interaction solution so far. I haven't seen one. So that is where I think the gap of what is an experience, and they completely missed it because we thought is there something happens behind, you know, under the ground and something happens in ether, and every interaction that happens between those two is completely was missed out. And the customer experience was lost right there, or the experience was lost right there. This is our strategy, and we are proud of it. In the context of experience, if I do, I think Luca mentioned, if we have an organization called Customer Experience Organization, it ain't going to work. Uh, I come from service. I am part of the operations uh, team, uh, and I live and sit with the customers. There is no separate organization that creates a strategy and stuff like that. Our service organization is called Customer Experience Organization itself. That organization actually puts together a customer strategy, put together a service strategy, put together an operation strategy. So in the entirety of it, this is the program that we are talking about, but these are the six pillars for our strategy uh, that we put together last year in July, and this is our strategy for the next two years. The reason I want to, before I go into the details of it, I want to tell a couple of things because of the name the first revolution that happened in our species was cognitive revolution. Uh, 200,000 years ago, we started to think. Humans started to think. Humans had to be evolved to become intelligent because there was no reason for us to survive with all the things that was happening 200,000 years ago. We were not strong. We were not big. We were not, you know, there was no choice. There was no actually absolutely there was no two million years ago we came in, but 200,000 years ago is when the cognitive revolution happened. Of all the revolution, the agriculture, the industrial, the technology, I think if we had not thought what we wanted to, if we had not become an intelligent being, 
then this entire gig would have been, you know, for waste, I think. So in the context of this today's seminar, cognitive revolution was the most, and we are trying to catch up 200,000 years of gap here, which makes, you know, really funky if you think that way. Everything that we do in the context of experience, especially in telco, is contradictory. Uh, uh, Luca mentioned, Dan mentioned, Ian mentioned it. I'll give you one example. It has to be face-to-face -face human interaction. And then we go and talk about chatbots, and we talk about you know, next-gen solutions, and that, you know, completely opposite two things. It contradicts between we are trying to talk about human uh, relationship, but also trying to expand and deploy solutions that are, of course, intelligent, but you know, it's not a human interaction, is it? Because we want to increase the, improve the experience, but our solution is in a different context. Just like life, that's why I don't like to call it a customer experience, it's human experience. Humanity is, you know, uh, is partly fiction and partly truth. It's a life of contradictions. And that's what generally in the context of communications is, you know, partly fiction and partly truth. And that's, that's what happens. We are trying to standardize. As soon as I standardize, one shoes does not fit all. Why am I standardizing something? So we want to standardize to give the best experience to the customers, and we are saying, no, you know, every customer is unique. So everything that we say in the same word, in the same strategy, it, it contradicts. We contradict ourselves, uh, and we're trying to find that you know, balance of you know, where is it that we are trying to meet. Yeah? These are our pillars. The reason it is, is we are, trying, we are doing a complete supply chain transformation in the context of, number one, we're completely transforming the way we do interact and talk to our customers, or what we call our Salesforce transformation. Second, at the other extreme of the supply chain, what I call the red carpet, we are now moving towards the most intelligent network that can ever be. The latest of the technology, the latest way of deploying the solution, the latest way of getting the customers by themselves to give them the B2C kind of experience into a, instead of a B2B kind of experience. One of our key programs called Novitas, where a customer for the first time in the context of telco, he can come in, register himself online, find a, a solution that he needs to connect, especially in the context of data centers, assign himself, allocate himself, activate himself, everything online on demand, including the capacity, quality of service. And it's one of the key programs in the context of where we are moving towards the intelligent solution at the network space. The third thing is, let me ask you this. As soon as I ask, what is an Ethernet connectivity? How do I connect building A to building B in the context of a pipe? It is so abstract. Every one of us think, uh, how does it look? Do we know how it looks? Does people know what is an Ethernet connectivity or what a broadband connectivity or a telephone connectivity? Or how does it really look? We take it for granted, but we work in a space of complete abstract. Experience will only come, the kind of experience that we're talking about if we eliminate that <coughs> thinking in abstract, talking in abstract, dealing in abstracts. And telcos, one of the biggest reasons we are failed is we talk in abstract all the time. We connect this building to that building. We are connecting data centers. Data is moving there. Oh, what? Everybody has a different opinion. So I'll talk about what is it that we are trying to eliminate talking in abstract. Uh, there is a level of uh, mystique. Something happens. It's a black box. I don't want to know. You tell me. I just need to, it to work. But what does it really mean? You know, experience is something beyond. So we are trying to shrink. The beautiful thing that Luca was talking about, the degrees of separation. The degrees of separation, the solution that we are trying to put together is to shrink that. To shrink the distance between what is abstract under the ground or in the ether to the customers. Uh, we have to. Uh, that's when the transparency comes in. That's when you predict a solution. That's when you talk about what is it that you're trying to deploy. And that's uh, our strategy in the context of our experience that we are trying to give. And to uh, encapsulate everything, challenge a culture, you know, we don't have a dog yet. Uh, where is Dan? I think he must have left. But without the people internally, uh, our people understanding what is it that we are doing and what is it that we need to do, 
there is no way if we are not, uh, don't have a con context of culture, who we are, the identity, the entity of ourselves, then there's no point in talking about the experience that one will want to give. I want to start here as my baseline. It is an operational slide. I come from service. I want to give a bottom-up view of, I think few of us asked what, uh, what it really means. Um, this is where we are. Uh, what should be the NPS for a doctor, uh, let's say a surgeon? <coughs> 65, 75, 40, 15, 80, I don't know. For, for him, for a doctor, where, you know, a surgeon, what is the NPS for him? Well, or what is the... If he's operating on me, I hope it's 100%. Is it? Oh, wow. <laughs> right? I mean, absolutely. I mean, what is the difference here? Why, you know, our target, the yeah, three-year target in telecommunication, at least for cold, is we want to achieve 60 by 2020, uh, beginning of 2020. We only have two years. We are number one in the world, number one in the world in telco. No other telco comes close to where we are. 54 is our NPS for a premium plus customer, meaning a customer that we interact on a day-to-day -day basis in a special way is 54. Uh, BT, global services, is minus 15. Uh, it, it, and it's not unheard of. I come from there. I just come from, uh, I used to lead the program. It's not unheard of to be in the negative uh, territory in NPS when we start that as a. But there is a reason to this. This is what customers are telling us. Uh, these are, and we are not, we, gonna, we send this to everybody, all of our customers, all of our partners. And this is what the customers are talking about. No, generally, uh, telcos do not uh, showcase their operational NPS. Uh, what's a big deal? I mean, you know, this is our operational NPS, and that's our uh, relationship NPS, actually. And our, you know, the target for us, and there are so many aspects to it, not just technological, as Luca was talking about, the, f the physical, the human, the logical aspects of it. So this is my, our base, uh, where we are, and what is it that we are trying to do. All the KPIs that you are going to see next, operational KPIs, somehow links to this um, NPS that we're talking about. I actually do not, I hate the word manage. I don't want to manage NPS. I don't want to manage customers. As soon as you say trying to manage somebody, you're trying, to, what is it I'm managing? I'm trying to convince him about something that he is telling, you know what, you know, this is like this, you know, we're going to do this. Management at a word manage, how it is, is should be out of it, actually. When you think about managing, let's manage this customer, manage the situation, you will not get to the root cause. So customers, I generally don't like to use the word customers. I also don't like to use the word manage. I don't know if, uh, if you all know faulty towers. We feel in telco we are working in faulty towers. If not for the damn customers, we would do very well, right? Let me hang the moose. I mean, let me clean up my you know, billing system. Hold on for a second. Let me do this. But he has to come. He's always you know, uh, disturbing us. If he is not there, our systems would work perfectly, Luca. You know, our processes will work perfectly. We would be on time whenever we tell, we'll tell. But it's what it is. It's a faulty tower, uh, and we have to move away from it. It's a, it's a, again, it's one of those paradoxical things. As soon as I win a contract in the context of B2B, a hundred million contract, I should be up, you know, jumping up and you know, down with joy because I won a contract that's hundred million. But we run around like headless chickens thinking, oh my Lord, we won it. It's fantastic, let's have a party. And then from as soon as that, for the next six months, everybody's life is held to try and get to what is it that we are trying to do. That's the reality if you guys are in B2B space. The previous slide was a good story. This is where we are. And you know, most of our circuits, most of our ethernet, our core uh, marquee circuits, ethernet circuits, let's just say point to point or point and multiple uh, hub and spoke, we take close to three freaking months to get a uh, pen running. Who would want it? Who would want to wait 74 days to connect a, it could be anybody, I'm talking about the butchers, the bakers, the uh, candlestick makers, all the way to you know, a, 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 a super resilient uh, credit suisse, uh, right? I mean, you can't do 
and differentiate and you standardize and you know look at one person this way and one organization that way. Our solution is the, this. For example, if I compare to uh, AT and T, it's 180 days. If I compare to BT, it's 120 days and stuff like that. I mean, everybody is in is in you know uh, I don't know where they are. Look, uh, you should tell where they are. Where we are. It's it's yeah. I mean, to connect a solution. It takes 74 days, and this is where we want to be. I'm, I'm generalizing this. There are a lot of IP-based solutions that are instantaneous like that. We want to do it on demand, and boom, boom, boom. There are things that requires, let's say, even physical. We shouldn't be taking 74 days. Our solution is, this is the solution. I want to give across all family of products, IP or uh, logical or physical one day uh, quote. One day is a misnomer, it should be instantaneous quote, on demand quote, uh, and that's what we want. We generally take over 600 to 700,000 quotes every year, and I'm not going to tell you the conversion rate out of that 600,000 quotes because we take, let's say, nine days, and it's not even consistent. You know, sometimes I give you in a day, sometimes I give you in 20 days, sometimes like average, this is an average of averages, so it's nine days. After I take the damn quote, I take another seven days to clean the order. Customer needs to give his address. We don't know how to get his address, and we, what's the IP, which box I need to, what, I mean, we bother the heck out of him, and he's like, whatever. After the order gets created, by the time it really goes to an engineer, it's already 20 days gone. And, and, and I mean, it's a beautiful you know, deck of cards that happens. It works, this is a what I call the daisy chain of miracles. If you're, ha if you're lucky, yeah, you're gonna get it. If you're not, then you, you know it, it works on miracles. You know, every step is a miracle that you take. You know? And it works. It's beautiful. If it doesn't, then you're you're in. This is where we are. I'm giving the two KPIs, the NPS and one of the key KPIs. There are hundreds of them. Is because this is where we are, and we need to migrate towards uh, something totally different. If I put a strategy after showing you those slides and talk, start talking about uh, artificial intelligence, cloud, uh, big data, biometrics, robotics, uh, and the next gen solutions, you must be thinking I'm smoking something, right? We, when you talk to a customer experience in different industries, the maturity, you get the output of it depending on the maturity of who we are. Uh, in 20 years or 10 years, I don't think we'll be talking about, oh, we want an ordering system. We want a, uh, no company that came out after 2001 does not do digital transformation. Do they need to? They've, they look at us, every company that's 15 years and under, they have no concept of digital transformation because that's, that's they're thinking, what is, am I going to transform? I am, I am, I am, I am DG. So every telco, every big organization, not just you know, telco per se, any big organization that was before 2000, everybody is going through digital transformation. HSBC is doing a digital transformation of 1.2 billion pounds. 1.2 billion pounds digital transformation for HSBC is. I don't know what it means, honestly, but uh, I'll just pick up a couple of things. I would like to start with this. And the reason I want to start with this is because what Luca was talking about and what Ian was talking about. I customer comes and says, I want this dude. And I'm saying, okay, are you gonna get it day after tomorrow? Say he doesn't get it day after tomorrow, he gets it day, day after tomorrow. His level of frustration, anger is for that one day. Right? Uh, you, you ass has told me you're gonna get it on Friday. You're now giving it to me on Sunday. I planned my wedding and, and I have to postpone it to Monday. But as soon as I give a service to the customer, his dependency for the rest of his life, let's say, the relationship with me and him changes completely. His dependency on the solution that I gave him from the minute to the second I gave is totally different than me being two days late in my delivery because he did not have something. Now he has something and his dependency on that to run his business, his survival, his reproduction, everything depends on it. And if something happens, switch off your credit card or switch off your broadband, is a totally different experience than till you bought, went and buy a, a you know, Apple iPhone or a, till you went and signed up to a, a mobile operator uh, scheme. 
because your dependency is totally different, your relationship with the guy is different, the in-life management in the context of B2B, the kind of customers that whether it is a farmer, a doctor, or a big bank is totally different. There, the solution, what I call it knock on the wall, is knock on anything actually, uh, knock the network operation center, sorry for telco guys, is to carry you know, everywhere. I want to show, there is a circuit in court that connects London and, uh, and New York. Uh, it's a, one of our marquee customers, London Metal Exchange. It carries a traffic of 30 billion quid every, year, every day on that network. If I don't show him how that network looks physically, visualization, look I was talking about. If I don't show what the traffic looks like and what are the packets that it's like, like currently, you know, we don't. We just give him some kind of a reports and he says, oh, your traffic is like this and this is what it is. A 30 billion quid one circuit, the kind of transaction, if I cannot visually see what is happening, then I don't even know how I'm going to fix it if something, oh no, for God forbid something happens. Visualization is the key in context of everything. Elimination of abstract, elimination of working in the world of you know, mystified, you know, shamanic ways of things is visualization of, especially in communications, we have to. We have done it a very, very bad job of visually giving what is a telephone looks like. I'm just talking in the context of fixed, but you know, in any of those things. So that's what knock on the wall is, is to provide a proactive solution in the context of number one, visualize it. If you can visualize it, you can orchestrate it. If you can orchestrate it, you can preempt it in the context of in-life service. If you can't, then you will actually, our knock guys, our uh, service engineers will actually be running around trying to figure out where the hops are, where it is, where its packet loss is, et cetera, et cetera. The solution that we are going to try and put is to link, is to shrink the entire strategy that exists. Of course, it runs on the infrastructure, data is the key, is to shrink the distance between the end customer and what's happening on the circuit. He can have it 24 7, 365, what's happening on his solution. And one of them, I'm just highlighting that one specific thing uh, is that. These are the KPIs, these are proper operational KPIs, all equates to our NPS of 60 that we want to do at some point in time, or the solution or the strategy you generally put together, is it for a cost based strategy or is it a growth based strategy? Everybody you know, has their opinions depending on the life you know, maturity of the organization. You put a strategy for cost or you put a strategy for growth and then you think you have it, but then you have to meet somewhere in the middle because whatever happens. So by doing all these fancy, beautiful things, you know, there is a productivity number that I'm not gonna bore you with. But I just put the operational KPIs just so that we know what, you know, for the service guys, you know, it's a, it's something that figure out what is the reality, what is not. But perception in the context of uh, our partners, our human interaction equates down to something like this. Why, why do we always fail? I mean, there are millions. I think our next guest is going to talk about it, why telcos fail. I call it, you know, I'll pick this one, conventional in the context of the legacy. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, we have the amazing, you know, uh, it's like a museum of uh, arts, you know, we have things that we invented by even Bell, I think, and we still carry it, uh, right? In a con legacy, what is legacy? I mean, legacy, you can twist it and say it's heritage. And we use heritage when we want to, and then we are, uh, you know, come back to legacy, oh, Telcos can't do this. We have 45 different voice networks and 204 different IP networks. We have 4,000 systems and, oh. But then, oh, we are 105 years old, we know how to do it. I mean, we, we misuse and use the same, what we call conventional stuff. Second thing is culture, our mindset, in the, we are utility, utility mindset. I mean, that's why everybody beat us. I mean, communicate, telcos, uh, completely, we, we could have done face, all application layer solutions, we lost, uh, telcos lost. Uh, all the, you know, all the, anything interactive, anything interactive in the context of experience we lost. I mean, no telcos ever did it, so some kids went and did it thinking, you Muppets, let's, let's go and try and do it. So that's the culture thing, is about the mindset within the organization in telcos, why we felt that. And the third thing is customer itself. I mean, you know, what does he want? I mean, you know, we ask, you know, in the context of B2B, what do, what do they want? And it's very hard to understand what exactly customer wants to a level 
that you know what Luca was talking about in you know what is going on you know cognitively and the solution that we need to put together. It's hard to understand our customers globally. We are conventional and we are uh, stuck in the past in culture point of view. That's one of the you know the hundreds of reasons I've just tried to distill. Uh, equating to what our, you know, OVM and Forrester and Gartner colleagues are talking about when it comes to telco, why we fail. This, you know, everything that you guys, uh, you know, the, the building blocks that you saw a couple of slides ago is a digital transformation. I told you guys earlier, I, why do we call it a digital transformation? I can't go into a boutique nowadays, especially in shortage. If you walk around and say, we are doing digital transformation, <laughs> they're going to kick you out. Thing. Get the heck out of you. you don't know what you're talking about. But uh, that's where we are, telcos are, and that's the, our level of maturity uh, in the context of on-demand solutions that we want to give, uh, intelligent uh, cognitive uh, you know, uh, interactions that we need to have uh, in the context of both human touch and what Luca was talking about in the context of technology and innovation and stuff. I'll start, stop in the last uh, slide. Uh, this, you know, I have to say this because what we are trying to do is, is to make ourselves the entire assets, including the human assets to physical assets to infrastructure assets, network all the way up to customer intelligent. You know, our core network is called IQ Network now. We launched it two months ago with the analysts globally in the world and all the way up to a cognitive solutions that we want to give uh, to have the best experience. Connectivity matters. World connected is a good place. Thank you. <laughs>